With graphics pricing being as crazy as it is, a lot of us are eyeing a PC upgrade but can't afford to sell a kidney to be able to buy the latest and greatest from the likes of Nvidia or AMD. That leaves your CPU, which thankfully aren't priced as high as graphics cards, however there are still an overwhelming amount of choices out there when it comes to chips from both Intel and AMD. This leaves the Intel Core i5-9600K as a temptingly cheap choice, being found easily for around $200 online. However, with the i5-10600K being priced only $20 more, and the i5-9400F undercutting it by a solid $60, is the 9600K still a decent choice for gamers in 2021? And if not, which processor should you be targeting in your build? Alright, so let's start off this review by taking a look at the specs of the 9600K and see if we can draw some conclusions as to the makeup of this chip. Rocking 6 cores and 6 threads, the 9600K is off to a pretty rough start, with half the threads of its generational successor, the 10600K, and primary competitor, the Ryzen 5 3600. IPC though is comparable between the chips, but the thread count is definitely a turn off for some. Memory compatibility with this chip is also the gold standard Intel setup, allowing for a maximum of 128 gigs of 2666 DDR4 in dual channel. And like the i7-9700K, the 9600K allows for memory overclocking with the controllers easily accommodating for a 3200 MHz kit. Unlike Ryzen chips, these Intel chips aren't as picky when it comes to RAM compatibility, so if you're thinking about picking one of these chips up, I would aim for higher RAM capacities over faster kits. Moving into board compatibility, this chip is compatible with the chipsets on screen. However, it is worth noting that this chip features compatibility with B360, which is a great budget choice if you're only planning on running the thing at stock clocks. A good rule to follow if you're unsure about your board is that if it's compatible with an 8th gen part, it'll be compatible with a 9th gen one after a simple BIOS update. It's actually an alright socket to buy into in 2021, as it leaves an upgrade open to an 8 core 9700K or 9900K, and as time goes on those chips will start to drop in price and make them even better deals. I would recommend at least a Z370 board if you're planning on upgrading to an i7 or higher down the line but it's also important to keep in mind that the value monster that is AM4 exists, and offers chip compatibility spanning four generations as opposed to LGA 1151s too. Clocks on the 9600K are also faster than the competition, maxing out at 4.6 GHz single core turbo when stock settings are used. My chip was able to hit an all core of 4.9 GHz at 1.29 volts. however I wouldn't recommend keeping the voltage this high. I'm pretty sure though that I lost the silicon lottery with this particular sample. 4.8 GHz would probably be achievable on most chips with the overclocking friendly board, but either way you're getting 6 Skylake cores at pretty high clock speeds. Cache speeds on the 9 megs available on this specific chip were also limited to 4.7 GHz as was ring bus, which is unfortunate, but once again is probably due to the silicon quality of this chip. Your mileage will vary. However, if you strap on a decent cooler, you'd be able to hit 4.6 GHz on all cores with ease, and probably push beyond if you tune your hardware properly. Another improvement made with this chip over the previous generation i5-8600K was the introduction of a soldered integrated heat spreader, or IHS, as opposed to a standard pasted on spreader that we'd been seeing for generations at that point. And whether it was AMD forcing their hand or an internal change that was planned years ago, the soldered IHS brings along improvements to die temperatures and thankfully has stuck around on both the 10th and 11th gen chips. For this specific model, the soldered heat spreader allows for more overclocking headroom as thermal constraints can be reined in more. On this specific chip, it ran around 60 Celsius under an elongated blender cycles rendering scene, and power consumption never went above 118 watts. While sitting idle, the chip sat around 36 Celsius and consumed 15 to 20 watts depending on what was going on in the background. Power consumption, especially when compared to AMD's Ryzen 5000 series, is pretty high for a 6 core chip, and if I'm being honest, I find it kind of strange how my i9-9900K only draws 10 watts more when under load and offers a significant chunk of extra performance. Moving away from the specs of the chip, let's dive into the specs of our test system. Using my Z390A Pro as the backbone, this system supports moderate overclocking, 
and fully allowed our CPU to perform unimpeded by power requirements. To isolate the performance of our CPUs, we used a GTX 1080 and utilized a Kraken G12 to keep our card cool and clocked at 2 GHz. We paired all our chips with the same set of 32 gigs of 3200 MHz DDR4 courtesy TimeTech, and a Corsair H115i Platinum was also used to cool all our chips. Included with the 9600K results, I threw in the more budget-oriented Ryzen 5 1600AF, and also the maximum performance attainable on the socket, with the monstrous i9-9900K providing a high-end comparison point. All games were set to their lowest settings at 1080p, and the average was recorded over a 10-minute gameplay session. I've added some more benchmarking games to this suite of tests recently, and without any further ado, let's dive into some benchmarks and take a look at the 9600K's performance in context. Starting off with Cinebench R20, and our i5-9600K scored an all-core score of 2668 putting it behind our Ryzen 5 1600AF, but a country mile ahead of our quad-core 8350K. It's kind of impressive to consider that this chip is half the overall number of threads as compared to the Ryzen competition, and it's able to remain competitive not only in single-core, but multi-core workloads. It's a testament to Skylake's resilience, however it would start to fall behind if a Ryzen 5000 series chip were added to the comparison pool. Moving into games, and Cyberpunk 2077 really took our i5 for a spin, giving us a playable average of 62 FPS. But take a look at the minimum frame rate, and it's easy to see that it didn't run all that particularly well. Keep in mind we're also testing all our games today at the lowest settings, just to help our 1080 out with render times, but here it's easy to see we're CPU limited, as the i9 was able to brute force an average of 98. The Ryzen 5 I also noted had some pretty bad stuttering that seemed to occur at regular intervals when assets loaded in the game world. However, when I turned on VSync, this issue mysteriously went away, and I'm actually kinda confused as to why the game behaved this way. Whether it's a little bug on Ryzen chips, or maybe some strange compatibility issue I'm running into on my specific machine, Cyberpunk technically was playable on all our chips, but I would recommend setting a 60fps cap and calling it a day. Apex Legend was beyond playable on all our chips, and seemed to actually run into an engine framerate cap on our i9. When playing I noticed that the FPS was basically locked to 144, so I went into the settings, looked for and disabled a framerate limiter, but I couldn't get the game to push beyond it. Either way our i5-9600K crushed this game, and even paired with a weaker GPU than what I've got featured here would deliver beyond playable results. It was a blast to play, and felt smooth on all the chips we're testing. Moving into Minecraft with Dinos, aka Ark Survival Evolved, the 9600K performed pretty similarly to the Ryzen 5 1600AF. However, I did notice that the frame times felt smoother on the Ryzen chip than on the i5. Even though the average is higher on the 9600K than the R5, the minimum and maximum frame rate show that the game was more prone to suddenly dipping in performance, probably due to the chip only sporting 6 cores and no SMT. However, despite this, the game averaged over 90 FPS on the i5, meaning it was more than playable, with some dips here and there when dinosaurs would spawn on screen or when vegetation spawned in. Despite the game world being relatively bare thanks to the graphics settings we're testing today, the game was a blast to play, and the i5 is a great pairing with Ark. Battlefield 1 was another strong performance for all our chips, with the i5 pulling an average frame rate of 149. This game absolutely loves AMD hardware though, so of course it ran excellently on our Ryzen 5 as well, but our i9 wasn't that far ahead of the other two chips when looking at things from a relativistic viewpoint. This could just be because Battlefield 1 is an older game, but on our i5 the game was more than playable and provided headroom for 120Hz gameplay and beyond. Looking at a more recent shooter, Black Ops Cold War pushed our average up to 187 FPS. Like our i7-9700K review though, the game stuttered pretty drastically at times, leaving it feeling kind of… well, awkward is the only way I can really describe it. However, once a framerate cap or vsync was introduced, it goes back to feeling like any other COD game, and was a blast to play on the 6-core 9600K. In fact, I would even say you'd be able to get similar performance from an i5-9400F. So if you're eyeing a Black Ops Cold War targeted build, then the 9400F might be an alright choice to get your build started. The OG Crisis proved to be a bit of a challenge on all our chips, with there being massive lurches no matter which processor was running the game. 
However, for a majority of the game session, you would be enjoying very smooth frame rates on the i5, and even the much cheaper 1600 AF. Once again, setting a frame rate cap made the game feel much more consistent overall, and the entirety of Crisis is playable at 60 FPS and above on the 9600K. The Intel favorite CSGO actually seemed to hit a GPU bottleneck on our i5, with said chip coming toe to toe with the i9. This normally should not happen, however, because we're testing with the GTX 1080, even our i5 was able to absolutely max out the card, thanks to the game being written on DirectX 9, and also preferring cores with higher IPC over pure core volume or thread count. I did want to note for a second though that our i9 was actually beat by our 9700K from our prior review by quite a long shot, I'm not sure as to why this happened, and like Cyberpunk I'm kinda left scratching my head as to the weird behavior that's probably caused by some unaccounted for factor. However, for competitive gamers, the i5-9600K provides more than playable frame rates, but for the ultra high refresh rate gamers out there, the i7-9700K might be the stronger choice. Doom Eternal, which if you're familiar with the tech behind it, is an incredibly CPU efficient game. And with our test settings, the i5-9600K returned an average of 143 FPS. Keep in mind that this game cares way more about your graphics card, but this just goes to show that for this game, the i5-9600K is more than enough to get the job done, and would even allow for some variable and high refresh rate gaming. Moving into Far Cry 5, and the 9600K once again provided a very playable average of 117 FPS. The i9 performance looks a bit weird here again, as it's not bunched together like the other two chips, however this is most likely due to an accidental pause during our gameplay session, but even so frame rates never drop to quote unplayable levels on our i9 or i5. In fact, the i5 offered super smooth performance throughout the entire test session, and the tight grouping of the minimum and maximum show this pretty nicely. Gears of War 5, another new game added to our test suite, provided console killing performance with our average FPS coming out to 122. This actually isn't that far behind the Ryzen 5 1600, which can be found for a similar price as the i5-9400F and offers roughly 89% of the performance of the 9700K. This is actually a game I've been getting into recently, and the performance on offer with the 9600K is beyond playable, and I played through a nice chunk of the game on the i5. The oldie but goldie GTA 5 actually appears to have a framerate cap in place, even though all settings that put a limit in place were turned off. Stuttering was also an issue on the i9, and for whatever reason was less pronounced on the 9600K. It could just be that this game prefers lower core count chips with higher clocks, but it could also be due to stutter caused by a randomized event in games, such as police spawning in or an explosion on screen. Putting our focus back onto the i5, the 9600K performed incredibly well on this now 8 year old game, which is kind of crazy to think about because I remember when this game came out like it was yesterday. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds also performed spectacularly in this relatively unoptimized Battle Royale title. If Fortnite is more your thing, then performance would look even better than this. However, the minimum on the i5 shows an overall more variable experience than NR i9. And even the Ryzen 5 seemed to struggle at times, which coincided with the drop-in phase. This is understandable, but once you hit the ground and start looting, performance jumps up and doesn't drop during combat or late-game firefights. Coming to the end of our benchmarking suite, and Call of Duty Warzone performed very well on the i5-9600K. While the minimum hints to a kind of rough performance profile, like PUBG, the drop occurred during the drop-in phase and wasn't sustained beyond being a little blip in the grand scheme of things. Warzone was more than enjoyable on the 9600K, and proves that 6 cores and 6 threads are more than enough to power a competitive gaming PC with this game being kept in mind. Overall, the Intel Core i5-9600K is an impressive little chip that packs a powerful punch under its nickel-plated copper IHS. Even though power requirements are a bit high when compared to the competition, the performance more than makes up for the extra juice required to power the thing. However, with so many chips being on the market that offer honestly better performance at less of a cost, it makes purchasing this chip in 2021 a bit hard to justify. When this chip came out back in 2018, it was a king among CPUs, and offered incredible performance when compared to the i5s we'd been seeing in the 6th and 7th generation lineups. However, with the i5-10400F and then much newer 11400F being priced lower than the 9600K, 
It's really not worth building a PC from the ground up using this chip when much more powerful offerings are so inexpensive in comparison. This doesn't make the chip pointless though, as if you've already got an 8th or 9th Gen i3 and you're looking to upgrade, then the extra two cores packed inside help make the 9600K a nice upgrade if you're a competitive gamer. The i7-9700K would provide a bit more value if you're looking to do some editing on your rig along with gaming, so I would recommend that chip over the 9600K if you're a content creator. For gaming, the 9600K shreds through most modern games. However, as we move deeper into the current generation of consoles, the 6 threads on offer will start to fall behind the 12 threads offered on current Gen i5 parts, especially in content creation and much more demanding games such as Cyberpunk. And if I'm being honest, my upgrade from my 9600K to my 9700K allowed my rig to become 4K editing ready, without having the frustrating experience of a PowerPoint slideshow as your editing program. If you're only planning on gaming on this chip, then upgrading from an older i5 or modern i3 is an excellent choice, as this chip is a gaming monster, although it's starting to show its age a bit when compared to the most recent round of releases, specifically Cyberpunk 2077 and Ark Survival Evolved. This also leaves open the question of Ryzen processors, and whether they're a better deal than the 9600K. While speaking specifically on the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, the chip can be found for roughly $120, and even cheaper if you're searching on the used market. With double the amount of threads, not to mention the much lower power consumption, it honestly makes that chip much more tantalizing than the 9600K. Also throwing in the fact that you'd be buying into the AM4 socket, which leaves you open to upgrading to a much more powerful chip later down the line. The more modern Ryzen 5 3600 is also another excellent choice from AMD, and that chip can be found for similar prices to the 9600K. However, if you're looking to stick with Intel, then the undisputed king of the budget space right now is easily the i5-11400F, which delivers a nice IPC bump at a solid $30 less, and the i5-10400F can be found for even less than that. While the i5-9600K is an excellent chip that would serve well to be in a gaming rig, with the competitive market at the moment, it's honestly outclassed by cheaper chips, and its aging socket leaves it to be somewhat less desirable when compared to the likes of AM4. However, on its own merits, the i5-9600K is an excellent x86 processor, and if the i5-11400F and new aggressive pricing is anything to go by, I think we'll be seeing one hell of a comeback from Intel in the very near future.